worked uh, some songs in the studio this time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so was it a new experience, or have you done that before? Never, never ever yeah. done it before. It's um, we were recording. I don't know what what song we were recording, and I came up with a new riff, and uh, Dave goes, "How's that go?" And he started playing it. Next thing you know, we had a new song, and I think Kerry did the same thing with Dave. So it's like I, th I think we're just all having a good time recording for a change, you know, because usually we go in, we got everything done, and we get in and go out, you know, get the fuck out. But this time we were having a good time just being in the studio, which is weird yeah, for us. Creative in the studio. Yeah, yeah, so which is weird. Two songs were written in the studio. I know um, 731 by me was written in the studio, yeah. and I forget which one by Kerry. But Kerry wrote one in the studio too, so, so at least two. Okay. So, which is, which to me is like amazing, because <laughs> that's not something we normally do. <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, you mentioned the song Unite uh, 731, so what's the topic behind this one? That one's um, about the whole Japanese Holocaust type thing, <laughs> where uh, um, it's, it's little known, but the, even before World War II, the Japanese were, um, you know, taking people and doing experiments on them, and medical experiments, just, you know, like, see what was going on and uh, they, they would actually like take pregnant women cut them open and take the baby out and yeah I don't know why <laughs> but, you know, that's what they were doing so that song's basically about the crazy shit they did it was yeah it's weird <laughs> I somebody um, told me about that because I had no idea that you know that happened because it's little known yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, like after that like uh, a lot of fans after that song came out, a lot of fans are giving me books about it. Cause, so I guess there's a whole history, you know, that I haven't even like got into yet. But it's pretty sick. <laughs> okay, so it's, it fit, yeah, it fits yeah. well with Slayer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All Painted Blood is definitely like a brilliant album's name for Slayer. You know, yeah. uh, apparently you're the one who find it. Yeah. You, you always find like this kind of cool title, you know, <laughs> for Slayer. So. It, it's kind of like. Um, one of those abstract titles, like uh, uh, Seasons in the Abyss. Like, yeah. what does that really mean? You know, <laughs> you're like kind of, you know, I don't know, like uh, World Pain of Blood, what does that mean? It's kind of, uh, I like those kind of titles, you know, because it just makes you think. And, and the song in itself, uh, what's the story behind, behind this one? It's pretty much the end of the world, that yeah. whole, uh, the Mayan thing, uh, 2012, when the whole world's going to end. <laughs> which is not too, it's right around the corner, like four years from now or something. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, the world's coming to an end. So oh, world yeah. painted blood. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the song itself and, uh, and a couple of other ones are pretty unusual for Slayer, I think. Um, this record, like Human Strain as well, uh, this one's pretty fresh. What Petal Blood structure is not really the usual Slayer song and definitely not the usual opener, you know. Where did you find this fresh blood, you know, in the mix? I had that music done for a while, just no lyrics to it. And, uh, you know, Tom and uh, Carrie were, you know, always saying, we got to do something with that song. We got to do something with that song. So finally I wrote lyrics to it and we put it on this album. But I've actually had that, that musically, that song for a while. Okay. For like a few years. Yeah. You can say in a way that Slayer during the 90s not lost it a bit, you know, but the record were not as good, you know, as the one from the 80s. And and, and since like a decade or so, you, the flame really went back, you know, and uh, why, according to you, you know. I don't know if you agree with us, but uh, I think since God it us all, yeah, the albums get at the same standard as the one in the 80s, you know. I think a, a big reason, like Dave's back in the band. Yeah. And it, it like, kick-started us, you know, because it's now we're, thank you, we're the original members again. Mm -hmm. And uh, since he's been back in the band, it's kind of like how we started in the 80s. Like, we're having fun, we're, like, running out and drinking and, like, <laughs> like being stupid and, like, having a good time. And it kind of reflects onto the music because you're, you know, you're having fun. And I think it's, like, a lot to do with him. Okay. And yeah. so, yeah, even from a, a writing yeah. perspective, it's different. He's always Paul or always there, yeah? Yeah, because um, if I come up with, like, a good riff and he, you know, likes it, he'll do something on the drums. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just keep building from there, you know. 
because it makes it exciting. Whereas like Bo Staff, you know, who who was a great drummer, but he wasn't really that creative to me. He was kind of like a machine. You know, you, you told him what to do. Where Dave would just come up with stuff yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> And yeah, you didn't write a lot on uh, on both uh, say your previous records, you know. Uh, whereas in the past we are like the main songwriter. So so why uh, you didn't write a lot on those previous two, you know? I think it's just um, you run out of ideas, mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to push stuff that sucks. So you just kind of like lay low, because you know because <laughs> we've got a lot of records. <laughs> Yeah. We've written a lot of songs, <laughs> so sometimes you just run out of ideas. I, you know, I got nothing fresh, and with this album coming up, it's like I had like all kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just you know whoever's got the hot hand, whether yeah. it's me or Kerry, you know, that's all. Kerry uh, said a lot in the press uh, this summer that he would compare this album to Season in the Abyss, and uh, so would you agree with him? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it's um, it's got tons of heavy stuff and then it's got some moody stuff and which would make it like seasons mm -hmm. um, but I don't know I think it's a great it's record diverse. yeah it's a little diverse but it's still heavy as fuck it's the first time you work with Greg Fidelman you know and besides you work mainly with Robin throughout your world career basically you try some other guy like Abraham and yeah. I and, uh, but mainly Robin so how was it to have a, a new guy in the mix he was actually a welcome I mean, he was like, apparently he was a Slayer fan for a while, mm -hmm. but he, uh, before we even went into the studio, he came out and listened to us rehearse to get the sound, you know, to hear what we sound like, you know, while we're playing. And uh, I think he did a good job, um, you know, translating, because it's hard, like, when you're playing live or you're playing, you know, practice, and then you go into the studio and they mic up everything and it goes through the board, mm -hmm. it's hard to get the same sound. Yeah. And he he pulled it out. He he did it and he did it pretty quick and I think I think he did a great job. Um from now on I he's the only guy I want to work with again for the next records. Okay, whatever so we're doing. Yeah. Pretty happy with him, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you would say bring to the table like the fact that to have like a natural sound to like Yeah. He he knew yeah. what we sound like and um it, it was kind of weird because we would uh do the rough mixes. You know, we'd go in and like just play the rough mixes, and uh, it already sounded like Slayer. And then when he did the final mix, he barely had to do anything because it already sounded like us. Yeah. He barely had to, you know, <laughs> it was already there. <laughs> the sound was there because he already dialed it in, you know, which is, you know, impressive to me because we've been with some other people that are just like, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, and I think it's more like, yeah, you say a lot, like, uh, Robin is, is never there, you know? No, he's never there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Psychopathy Red eventually finished on this record, but it's not an old one, because you played in Europe yeah. last year and stuff. Since you wrote this song as well, so what's also the story behind it? And, uh, Psychopathy? It's yeah. uh, um, that uh, Chikatilo, that Russian serial yeah. killer. And uh, I, I just got it, I picked up a book about him. And uh, read it, and I go, oh, I'm gonna write a song about this guy, because he's he's pretty fucking sick. He would have to uh, like like slice somebody up, like the girl or boy, because I can see like boys do, slice them up, and cut them open, watch them die, and as soon as they're dying, he would jerk off on them. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's like I don't know. I can't think that way, but you know, but I want to write a song about it because it's bad, you know, it's yeah. bad shit, and that's what Slayer writes about is like fucking horrible shit. But it's like, I, who are these people that think this way? <laughs> yeah, they think like this. So I, I just, I, mean, I read the book and I just like wrote down a bunch of stuff and then I eventually turned it into a song. <laughs> so. Tom's singing is pretty intense. For the, you know, the last verse is pretty intense. Really, it goes off like, I don't know, like since. Yeah, Tom, in, Tom, in uh, <laughs> Tom, yeah, Tom without, um, much coaching. Tom went off on this record. Yeah. I mean, he had a, I, I think he had a good time, like, just singing. Because sometimes, you know, like in the past, it's like, come on, Tom, let's, let's do it. Because, you know, it's, he's not playing live, you know, he's not singing yeah. live, and you know, you're in a studio, and you, sometimes you get, you know, bored. But, like, on this record, he was just going off. I mean, a lot of stuff was like one take. <laughs> he's like, you're done. <laughs> like, he's like, you're done. So, 
he had a good time on this record. There was there was parts with Dave too. Um, I think in the beginning of uh, World Paint of Blood, yeah. um, you know the intro part and yeah. how it goes into that Tom part. I don't know if you know that. Dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. And then the, the toms come in. Um, that came later. I, I came up with that out of nowhere. And I go, Dave, go in and do this. And that's what I said to him. And he walked in there, did it. And I go, you're done. <laughs> you did it perfect. Because I think everybody was just into this record. So it was fun. You what Eyes of the Insane, uh, which won a Grammy. Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Well, I mean, I, I guess it's cool and everything, but and it's like, don't really care. <laughs> I think it's a cool song. <laughs> yeah, Tom wrote the lyrics to that. Tom, when he writes lyrics, he gets really dark and deep. And I think it's, it's good. He just doesn't do it enough. You did this tour with Megadeth. It's strange for people to see Megadeth and Slayer on the same tours. And uh, so, yeah, all, 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 all the whole things worked with Dave, Mustaine again and stuff. You know, it yeah, it's not a problem. There's no uh, arguments, no fights, no fist fights, nothing. <laughs> no, he... Uh, Yeah, we got along with him, and, and I think it's good to play because I actually like Megadeth. Yeah, you know, you I don't like I don't like all their songs, but yeah. I like they, they've got some good songs. I never had a problem with it, like yeah. Dave or anything, but you know some of the guys in my band did, and and of course I would always instigate. You know, <laughs> like, he said what? He said what about you? <laughs> but that was like to me it was all fun, and maybe those guys were a little serious about it. But yeah, everything's over. It's like. Yeah. I mean, he gave us, uh, I don't know, he gave us, like, gifts, like a bottle of vodka and, like, some pot and, like, whatever, and said, thanks for the tour, you know, <laughs> on the last thing, so it's like, peace offering. Yeah. <laughs> are you still following what all your um, cameras from the 80s are doing, or are you more interested in newer stuff? And I, I don't really follow what's going on. I don't really follow the scene. I'm still waiting for, like, the new... I don't know, new type of metal that's going to come yeah, out. Yeah, like, yeah. somebody's going to come up with something that's, like... Like the new Slayer, the new Pantera, yeah, the exactly. new Metallica. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something that's going to knock me off my ass and, like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for something that's just brand new. Yeah. It's, like, heavy, um, fast, and just something that doesn't sound like us or anybody else. It's something that's just <laughs> original. I don't know what that's going to sound like, but that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> yeah.